here's your first lesson. Looks like you're stuck between me and a hard place. Our paths have woven together for a reason. I've given up too much to let you stop me. That is actually what I wanted to have happen. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm gonna show you how to play the new reworked Talia today. The most important change here is that she is finally back as a mid laner. So what they did is that they nerfed the early game, so they nerfed a lot of the damage in the early game, but they put the AoE damage back on her Q and they also made it so her E stuns now if you knock people through them or if they try to like dash through the minefield. So for her passive, when you walk nearby terrain or structures then you get some bonus movement speed. This is very good for roaming around the map and also just to get back to lane a lot faster. Then we have the Q which is like her range damage so it's going to make her throw um, shards at the opponent, like 5 of them. And when I use that Q, you get this uh, work ground around you and when you stand inside that work ground and use a Q, it's going to cost a lot less mana and instead of throwing multiple shards, it's going to like throw one big rock that deals double damage and also slows people and that's absolutely insane. So it's a champion um, that's a lot weaker in the early game now uh, because otherwise this would be really OP but she spikes at like level 9 and stuff that's why she becomes really strong so that's what you're playing for. Then you have the minefield as I said so right here they buffed the range of it so um, it has a lot higher range and also when people try to dash through it they're gonna get stunned so this basically means that um, you have a chance to like fight assassins and other high mobile champions now, like Ari for example, because they have to think twice before they try to engage on top of you. Because if they try to dash through the uh, minefield, your E, they're gonna get stunned and then it's a lot easier for you to like chain CC them. Then you have your W, um, so this is the ability that you used to like knock people into a direction that you choose and most of the time how you do this is that you initiate with your W, um, you knock them towards you and then you follow up with a minefield because that is going to stun them and then you just use your Q and nuke them down. Um, this is like the basic combo, W into E into Q. If you're running first strike right here, you can also use electrocute but first strike is just OP so really there's no reason to not use it, especially on something like a Talia. So you can also use that E minefield to like zone people away, that's like the point of Talia right now because it also slows people um, who are inside of it. Um, so the goal here on the new Talia is that you want to build a lot of ability haste and also items that give you a lot of mana because she's going more of a utility path uh, because they nerfed the early game damage so she becomes really good at zoning people away now. It's pretty much like a puppy of the mid lane. Um, she really... Uh, destroys those dashing champions. So uh, we got a really good kill uh, for the Kindred right here so we're just gonna back off and reset and we're not sitting on a lot of gold right now so we're just gonna go ahead and get that tier because we will be building the um, Archangel Staff because as I said mana Ability S is super super important on this Talia because you'll have very low cooldown so you want to be spamming your abilities later on and this item is absolutely perfect for that. On top of that you also get some sustain. You see when I walk back to lane, walking nearby the structures and the terrain here so you get that passive up and running and that allows us to get back a lot faster. So you don't waste any time, get back to get the minions. Now, originally, like in the start before they reworked her, the entire point of Talia was just to perma roam, you shove the wave and roam. You can also do this right now, but be, do be careful because like this champion is extremely weak in the early game now. Um, you want to farm up, you want to get like around level 9, and then that's why you really come online. Because that's why you have your Q fully maxed out, meaning um, that it's a lot easier to wave clear, but you also deal a lot more damage. So we saw the Syndra roaming bot lane, that's why I'm setting up a freeze right here because that made sure that she lost a couple minions, so that's nice. And that is how you punish people when they roam without setting up the wave in advance. Or if you have time, you can shove in the wave and try to take tower plates. So when you want to push the wave, like if you want to insta shove, um, use the W to knock like three minions into the E. 
Or try to extract the mob at the same spot so the AoE damage on your Q um, is going to hit all of the minions. You can see the damage is not the best right now, but the idea here is that you land the W into the E into Q and really abuse that work grind Q. Because that is double damage and it also slows people, so it's very good for kiting and making sure that people cannot gap close onto you. And now you're going to use the ultimate here. So what it does is going to summon a massive um, uh, terrain right here. So if you click it once, it's only going to summon the terrain. But if you double click it, then it's going to summon the terrain and then you're going to ride it on top. And then you can like right click to like stop whenever you want to. And the other change right here is that... Um, you no, you no longer drop out of the terrain when you take damage. Only if you get CC'd now, so that's also really nice. But this is not something you can use while you are in combat, um, because that would also be pretty OP. But this ability is very good for, um, what's it called? Stoning people away in fights, but also for roaming, especially for roaming. So like, you can use the ultimate to like cut off the escape path while you're roaming towards the bot lane, for example. And that's going to guarantee either summoner spells being used or um, you getting the kills. So we're just focusing on pushing out the wave here. You can see this is how you want to wave clear. I knock the melee minions towards the ranged ones, or you can also do it with the ranged ones. Just make sure that you're knocking them um, into each other so they're stacked up, meaning that the AoE damage on your Q is going to like hit all of them. That allows you to wave clear a lot faster. But this ultimate is also really, really nice for, you know, when people try to do objectives like the uh, dragon and stuff, you can zone people away or you can lock them inside the pit. Um, so you make sure they are uh, not able to escape and then all of your teammates can just damage them. Just hitting battle lane ASAP here. So we have the tier, you can start with the tier, but it's a bit risky to do so into like difficult lanes like the Syndra. Um, so I went for the Corrupting Potion because we also have Time Warp Tonic that allows you to get a stronger early game because that is where this version of Talia is at her weakest. So that's basically to help her get a stronger early game and survive. And this is how you wave clear, as I said. Knock the minions into each other and then use the Qs and bam, the wave is gone. And now that you also have the Lost Chapter, which is a pretty big spike for any mage because now you have the mana to like push it out. I am running cleanse this game and when you look at the enemy team composition that does make sense why. Syndra mid lane and Evelyn jungle. If I don't have cleanse I'm gonna get perma ganked and if I ever get hit by one CC I'm just dead. So cleanse is gonna help uh, with that. So we have first strike as well. As I told you guys it's really OP right now. Um, it has been really really OP because the damage is nice and you also get free gold. That's gonna allow you to scale up a lot faster. And it's relevant throughout the entire game, right? And then you also get some really good runes in the um, Inspiration Tree, like the Free Boots, which is going to save you 300 gold, so that's also really OP. So I got a lot of good stuff from that rune page, and that just makes it the obvious choice on Talia. But of course, you can also go for Electrocute, Dark Harvest, Arcane Comet. Um, I suggest trying all of them out and see what works the best for you, but First Strike is good into everything. Making roam in the bot lane, you can see you have to be really good at um, hitting that W guys. Um, because otherwise you're going to lose out on a lot of your damage because you want to knock them into a minefield. So press your W first, then into the E immediately and then your Q. And it's either going to take away a summoner spell or they're going to die. So hitting that Q is something you really have to practice a lot and it can be difficult in the start when you first learn Talia. But I suggest that you go into practice tool and then just spam that ability so you re really learn how it works. So we finally picked up a couple kills. That's really nice. Um, as I said, this champion is not a pretty weak early on. Like super super weak actually. And that's something you really start noticing when you face really good players because you'll not be able to pick free kills um, in the lane most of the time. So goal is just to farm up, um, if you can, you can also shout the wave and just roam. 
But it is going to be difficult against the um, harder matchups. That stun um, is one of the huge changes um, alongside the Q AoE damage. Because like it makes it so Talia can actually survive a lot of matchups right now. Like it makes her less punishing to play. Look at how I'm using that ultimate, completely zoned the Syndra away and also locked up the Evelyn. That is how you can use the ultimate guys. That is exactly how you want to use it. You use it to cut off escape paths, also use it to isolate enemy targets so their teammates cannot help them out. And then just lock somebody down and you get the kill. So for the mythic items you have three options, you can go for Everfrost, you can go for Lunas Tempest or you can go for Lyandris. Everfrost is the consistent one, um, it gives you that extra bit of guaranteed CC and it helps you hit the rest of your abilities. And it also makes you tankier which is also really nice. And then Lunas Tempest is something you can use into very squishy teams so what you do when you buy it is that you go into Shadow Flame and Sock Shoes gives you a lot of early game magic pen. This is very good against super squishy teams. And then against tam tank team compositions you can go for Lyandris Anguish. But I have tried a lot of different builds and this one honestly feels the best so this, this is what I highly recommend. And we took out the ultimate from the Evelyn so that's really nice because if she did not do that she would have died. So Everfrost into Archangel Staff feels insane because you get all the stuff that you need. You get the guaranteed CC, you get the tankiness, you get the ability haste and you get a massive mana pool. That is gonna allow you to spam your abilities later on and that is what really matters on Talia. So just gonna keep pushing it out. Also do not underestimate the damage, um, the 1Q damage on the work ground. The damage is absolutely insane but the CC is as well because it is AoE damage. But when you use your um, Empower Q on the work ground, the work ground is going to disappear so keep that in mind as well. So it's actually really really good for poking but also for like wave playing. Because like that one Q deals double the damage. And that is something you will really start noticing in the mid game as you get more AP items. Because that's where um, Talia really kicks in. So it is a champion, um, she do still does have the burst damage. But she's more focused around having low cooldown damage right now and just being as annoying as possible. Fortunately Kindred got caught right here. Um, there is no way that I'm going to escape this either. Way too many people chasing me. So this is the problem with Talia is that if you don't have your flash up then you are completely immobile. So that's why having something, something like the Everfrost can really help out because you have the active um, for engaging but also for disengaging so I highly recommend that you use this or the Ludens Tempest into a very squishy team where you combine it with the Sock Shoes and the Shadow Flame. So we are just hitting bot lane, so we also make sure that we get some farm and XP for ourselves. Um, you don't want to be split pushing all the time, but when you have your ultimate up it's alright. So the first point in your ultimate they nerfed the range, but they actually buffed it at the um, last point, so at level 16 when you put the last point into the ultimate it's going to cover such a big part of the map that you can easily get from bot lane to top lane. When you like push into the enemy tier 3 and stuff, so that actually makes you um, able to cover big distances in almost no time. So that allows you to split push, but obviously this is not a very strong split pushing champion, because if you meet something like a Fiora or Yasuo in the side lane, they're gonna drop you. So just go to silence to pick up the gold and farm for yourself and then just rotate back. 
So you can take a flanking position in team fights. That's the fight starting right now on the top side, and our teammates are getting absolutely destroyed. But you can flank and you can try to like land a W onto somebody into the E because that's going to stun them. This right here is why Aero Frost is so good. Aero Frost into guaranteed W, into guaranteed stun, into guaranteed Q. This is why it has such great synergy with Talia. So I think the new Talia actually feels absolutely insane to play, like she's way more fun to play. She is back in the mid lane where she belongs. Um, so that alone is such a huge thing because like she was viable as a mid laner before but she has all, had almost no way clear when they removed the area damage on the Q. And once again you can see why Air Frost is so good. It's not only good for engaging but also for disengaging. Because otherwise, if I did not have it right now, I would have to use my flies to escape the Evelyn. They almost have enough gold for the Archangels, that's another big power spike as I said. Massive mana pool, a lot of damage and a lot of ability haste as well. Because like, your abilities are going to be on a really low cooldown later on in the game and you want to be able to spam it. And if you don't have the mana pool for that, then that's not going to happen right because most of the time in this meta junglers take away the blue buffs so even if you don't have access to the blue buff as long as you have this build like these items mythic item and the archangels you're gonna have a lot of mana Well, uh, yikes, I actually spam clicked the Corrupting Potion, but I forgot that it's in the third slot instead of the second, so I did not get the healing, otherwise I would have survived, but I also got caught off guard by the fact that Orn had like everything up and they still managed to kill the Darius, so yeah, I was not prepared for that. But you can see, this also, your ultimate is also really, really good for like engaging and, you know, getting to other parts of the map really fast. But we have the Archangels now, which is great, and then we just need it to be fully stacked. And then afterwards you can go Sonya's if you're struggling, or you can go for Death Cap if you want a lot of burst damage. I like to go for the Death Cap because that's gonna like make up for the loss of damage that they um, did to Talia where they nerfed the uh, base damage. So if you have the Death Cap, you're gonna have a lot of burst damage still, and that will allow you to still one-shot squishy targets. I'm still going to silence because if I go mid right now, I will not get any, get any um, gold or XP. They got a shutdown in the mid lane. I'm just pushing out in the bot side, making sure I get some gold and XP for myself. Because if you don't farm up, it's going to be really rough. People dying mid lane again, which is quite unfortunate. I was going to alt mid lane, but I saw the MF was here too, so if I did that, I would probably have died, so not worth it. You can camp in corners like this, guys. Sometimes people will be walking up this way to like get the minions or to like farm the jungle camps, and then you can like sneak in a W. Just look at this damage. This is like the mid game damage that you have on the Talia. So this is like the point where she starts to become really strong from level 9 and onwards. So the early game honestly is just about surviving and not running it down. So now that we got the uh, Janna and the Syndra, we can go for the Baron, but also we don't see the Evelyn, which can make it risky. Now we see her clearing out the ward here, so I can just wait in the corner for her to pop out. Um, but she's invisible, so it can be a bit hard to like predict where she is at. But we did secure the Baron, which is absolutely huge. 
We had like a massive lead in the early game, but we threw it, so the game became somewhat even. But now that we have the Baron, we have the lead once again. And I'm going to buy a Light Rod because we're going to build into the Death Cap. But it, as I said, um, if it's really difficult for you to survive in a fight, then just go for the Sonyas. You are going to lose some damage that way, but it's a lot better than you dying instead. The wave clear is insane now at this point in the game, where you have the damaging items. So you can just be a wave clearing bot, and if somebody comes and face checks you while you're camping, you can also one shot them. So try to like find good spots where you can flank people and also where you think they'll be coming towards, maybe towards the ripoff, you can camp inside the ripoff um, bush or a dragon, you know, close to the dragon, the baron. Lots of different places where you think the enemy support will come toward, or if the AD carry or squishy mage will come to face check. That way you can really abuse it and get a guaranteed kill. So you want to stay back and just look for opportunities with your W. And if you manage to hit somebody, then you're gonna get a free kill just like we did right here. You can see one full combo is going to clear them out. Unless you're super far behind of course, I'm not really that fit, it's like really normal to have like 4 kills at this point in the game. So it's not like I'm really fit either, um, but when you have the death cap and you're going even with the enemy team, it's still very possible. I'm just hovering around my teammates and constantly abusing that movement speed passive buff. And if a fight is about to start, I'll make sure that I'm there. Or if I'm not able to be there, then I'll at least show out the waves and try to get the towers. See, yeah, I'm camping once again, because if somebody comes this way, I can catch them out. I'm gonna go for the Evelyn. And she ulted away. Um, so that's great, because that's going to lower her kill potential. See how you use that ultimate to like lock people down. So Sundra was not able to get away, but this was a little bit bad of a spot because like my teammates um, did not collapse fast enough, so they managed to turn it around. But this is also stuff that you can do with the ultimate. Like you can isolate somebody from that team, and then your entire team can collapse and get the free kill. So teammates died, so they're gonna get the free uh, Drake. I'm gonna take away the Grump here, and then we can camp once again, because somebody is going to face check, guys. So we can sit in this bush right here, and then we just wait for people to come. Look at this damage. So use a normal Q into that Empower Q, because you have the workaround below you, and you have no cooldown, right? Because like, the cool look at that cooldown on that Q. It's absolutely insane. There's almost no cooldown. So, with a full combo, you can easily get a normal Q into Empower Q off, and that's going to clear out every single squishy target. As long as you're not super far behind. Need a bit more gold for the death cap. When we have that, that's going to be absolutely insane. Because that is like the biggest AP spike in the game we have, and that's of course going to help out with everything. The consistent damage, but also the burst damage. So I'm just gonna recall here and then wait a bit in the base, because there's no point selling the Corrupting Potion right now. Because I'm just going to get it, so just spectate for a while, while we're waiting for the death cap. And we just have a Kindred going absolutely ham. Not sure why that Sundra is, uh, went out of the Kindred ultimate, but it is what it is. And now it is showtime. We got the Death Cap, we got the Everfrost, we got a fully stacked um, Seraph's Embrace. So now is when we really start going ham. One full combo onto any squishy target and they're going to disappear. Normally you play here with Ignite 
but I had to take cleanse this game, so I don't have that high of a kill pressure, but at this point it doesn't really matter, because you are going to one-shot them. I'm just pushing out top side, and then I'm gonna go into the enemy jungle, take away the blue buff too. Because we saw the Evelyn bot side uh, clearing out our Darius and the Maokai, denying her the blue buff. Because now we have perma mana sustain, so we just perma spam the abilities too. And just gonna clear, clear this out and then I'll back off because the Evelyn is gonna be headed towards top side. Because the Evelyn obviously they will be coming for the blue buff, so I'm just gonna back off all the way here so I don't get assassinated. Now we can just also take away the Crux. Just like try to get all the farm that you possibly can. Uh, because it can be pretty difficult to get farm later on, so while you have the chance to do so, then definitely go for it. And uh, a kindred just getting popped in half a second, so nice, very nice. Pretty awesome. That's why I was being really careful of the Evelyn, because she's really fed right now. We had a massive lead early on in the game, but we threw it, so... It's pretty close at the moment. You have to stay in the back here, unless somebody is obviously overextended. You cannot frontline, you are way too squishy to do that and people are going to collapse. Look at how I'm positioning in the fight. Because if I try to walk up trying to DPS that Evelyn would have killed me. So if I don't see the Evelyn, I'm not going to walk up. Because she's gonna one shot me, like if she can one shot the Kindred, she can one shot me too. And that is a really clean combo into the cleanse allowing to get that kill on the Syndra. Now we can collapse. I'm using that ultimate to like lock up that team. You can see there was a short while where the Misfortune could not DPS the Baron. And because they were not able to do that, they did not get the Baron and now we are turning the fight. And that was a really really nice double knockup into the E. So if you can land these guys, that's going to be a ton of AoE damage. Hit two squishy targets and they will be wiped out. But for you to be able to do that, you have to make sure that you're out of vision because there's a delay to your W. So if they see it, they will be able to react to it. But if you're out of vision, then it's going to be really difficult. Alright, managed to secure the dragon. I'm just taking away the jungle camps as well. So like deny them all the XP and gold and also make sure that I get some uh, for myself. Now sitting on a ton of gold and people want to force stuff, I want to recall because that will allow me to get the void stuff. You can also get Sonya's at this point but I have not died that much so I think I should be alright. And also because the Orn is starting to build magic resistance, so to make sure that I stay, um, you know, well when at this point in the game, Void Staff is really really good to have. There's a fight starting here, I'm gonna go towards the Evelyn. That's a massive, massive combo onto the Evelyn. You can see that guy just got wiped out. And we got the Janon too, so that's awesome. Now we can go for the Baron. We have to go for the Baron. Even though the Kindred is not up, I have my ultimate and the jungle is down. So what we can do here is that if they try to contest, I'm just gonna place the ultimate in a line where I saw them completely away from the Baron. Now is the chance for us to do it and take back that lead we had early on.
And that is TG's. Now we got the Baron. So now we really have to make sure that we abuse it properly. So I'm going to go ahead and recall here and then we can get the uh, stopwatch. I'm not buying the component towards the uh, the other components towards the Sonia's Hourglass because this is a lot more imp important. I already have the damage I need, but also need the safety. So if the Evelyn somehow finds a way to like flank me, this is going to be my safety. AD carry got caught as usual, but I got the blue buff once again. So I'm just gonna stay mid lane and then just perma spam the Q if somebody walks up. So it'd be really great here if somebody could place down a control ward in the lane, you know. Um, right, not right now, but we'll like push up further because like if the evidence here, then we can see him. I need help in the mid lane. That's a nice double kill on the Kindred, but... Unfortunately died. Okay, so this guy flashed away. I don't think we're going to chase the Evelyn anymore, like Perma Stealth. Waste of time. But she could still be flanking me right now, so that's why I'm being a bit careful. You know, throwing the uh, Qs behind me. Because if she is nearby, then we can see her. Okay, that was actually strange. So like, Maokai knocked Evelyn out of my W. That exactly just did not hit. But the thing is, he was the one who spotted the Evelyn, so can't really blame him. Look at how fast that MF disappeared, but I'm dead. Yeah, I died, but you can see I one shot the MF and then I also made sure to get another combo off to like put Janna to really low HP as well, so she's out of the fight. And this was how to play Tal Talia guys, so I really hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and see you all in the next one.